Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Wayback Tech. Got a request to show off my uh, water cold PC which is right behind me here. So I thought I'd go ahead and do that since I went ahead and did a little bit of a spring cleaning on it. Gave it a good blow job and all the fans and the filters and all that stuff and vacuumed it out. Also topped off the water in the cooler. So let's get started. So to start things off, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this case. Uh, this is a Thermaltake Candolf case which has water cooling built into it. Uh, it was a complete kit, you just had to go ahead and assemble with the water uh, and the tubing and the pump and the reservoir and all that stuff already included. Uh, I originally built this in 2008 and unfortunately they don't sell these cases anymore and I haven't seen them on eBay so I don't know how easy it would be to find one of these if you ever wanted to. I've never had to replace the pump in this, although uh, when I bought this case there were some people that claimed that their pumps went out fairly soon, but I've never had one iota of a problem with the pump on this thing and I've used it quite a bit. Uh, I usually look at a computer case and the power supply uh, as an investment. I don't necessarily want to have to keep changing my case all the time, so I wanted to find a good case that will last me a very long time through many 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 upgrades and so far this case has worked out quite nicely for that uh, I originally built this case with the P5E motherboard and the Xeon uh, 3220 processor and 4 gig of RAM uh, now I'm running an i5 2520, 2550K processor that is overclocked to 5 gigahertz, yes 5 gigahertz uh, and uh, running a Sabertooth Z77 motherboard, ASUS branded motherboard. But uh, it just looks really awesome. It's a black motherboard. That uh, armor plating, as I would call it, kind of has a military quality kind of a look to it. Um, on the back side of this case, as you can see, there's some red sections there. And those are some removable panels that I painted early on. I just wanted to give it a little bit of a different look there. Um, these cases back in the day, they didn't come powder coated or painted on the inside, so as you can see it's still all bare metal, which is fine. So up in here, uh, this will hold three hard drives right here. There's a bay that comes out of here, and uh, I don't have that in there right now because I really don't see the point of it because I'm not going to put any drives in there, and it kind of restricts some of the airflow to the, to the uh, power supply. Uh, this is a, I don't remember the brand of this power supply, I want to say it's an Apiva, but I don't remember that for sure. Um, it's a 1200 watt power supply. When I built this, I originally used a 700 watt power PC and cooling power supply. And that power supply lasted me about three or four months before I started having problems, because I was originally running this with a pair of 3850s, Radeon 3850s and it just ended up killing the power supply so I said to hell with it and just went with a 1200 watt power supply and never went back and I've been very happy with it ever since. This case is not short of expansion bays for the hard drives as you can see this thing has mounting points for every, just about as far up the food chain as you can go on that thing. Uh, it's kind of pointless unless you're wanting to go ahead and load this thing up with CD-ROMs or hard drives or something like that. I think this is a workstation case that they turned into a uh, water cooling case. Uh, and I have the uh, reservoir and the pump mounted down here. And that was a little bit of a challenge because if I remember correctly, uh, there weren't really any uh, good mounting holes that were, you know, said in there, oh, this is where you should mount the pump and this is where you should mount the reservoir and stuff like that. Uh, so I just stuffed it back in there and, and put it in as many screw holes as I could. As you can see, there's a bunch of screw holes down in here for various mounting points, but uh, that was about the best place that I could come up with for it. Off the reservoir off, all I have to do is just go ahead and unscrew this little cap right here. Go ahead and fill it up with a little bit of denatured... Uh, not denatured, uh, distilled water um, just to keep it topped off there. Uh, about every six months or so I go ahead and check it. Uh, if it makes any kind of gurgling sounds I'll go ahead and top it off just in case. It's interesting because uh, this is a completely sealed system and when it goes gets low on water there actually is a vacuum 
on this seal right here so when I remove the cap you can hear air rush into that so I'm not entirely certain how the water ends up evaporating in a, in a completely sealed system but apparently it does so uh, that's why I have to keep it topped off I've never had one leak with this thing it's just been chugging along just the way it should be you can see these very nice fittings right here that are compression fittings so you put the hose in there and it's got a little compression sleeve in there so you just tighten it down and it seals everything up this is like I said it's been flawless and I haven't had any leaks with it at all tubing is what came with the system uh, it's fairly flexible when it's warm when it's cold it gets kind of stiff uh, and the liquid that came with the thermal tape case uh, does glow with the uh, black lights which I have two of them in this system uh, you can see one right behind there the reason it's behind there is because I used to have it mounted right here and the velcro that was stuck to the side the light side itself had come unglued so the light just kept falling down so I stuck it up there for a time being until I can get some velcro pads to replace these with um, and I've got another one back here but these actually even even with their position these these uh, tubes actually glow pretty well it's getting dark here soon so I'll do a night shot of this once it does get dark let you see these tubes glowing and of course I have these ram coolers right here and you know what sucks about these things unfortunately is that for whatever reason they seem to need lubrication out of the box because these things doesn't take them too long before they start making noise and this one was no exception I've had this in here for a while and it's been complaining for a while now, this is the second or third one I've had in here um, the other one I had in here was the dominator and this one I have on the big blue also and I need to go ahead and lubricate this but I like this one better because it has lights on it <laughs> and they're bigger fans uh, so that's that's they're kind of nice so over here is the thermal take water block as you can see I've never had a problem with this water block I've never had to clean it never had to do anything with it never had anything build up in or anything like that uh, and it's been tremendously reliable I, they, I give these guys a lot of credit because I've never had to do anything other than add a little bit of distilled water to keep the, the level right to where it should be the only problem I've had with this it's not really a problem but this bracket right here uh, was made to fit LGA 775 and some of the AMD chips. I think it was also made to fit some of the earlier Pentium 4s and maybe some slot or socket A processors as well, whose motherboards had holes to mount to the uh, motherboard directly, the heatsink to the motherboard directly instead of using the, the socket to mount to. Um, I had to drill these out slightly to fit the LGA uh, 1155 uh, socket. Uh, so that wasn't really a big deal. It's just one of those things that happens when Intel decides to change their freaking socket designs and make them so that nothing works with them anymore. So you have to come up with creative solutions in order to combat their changing things. Um, I don't know, I don't think this would fit uh, 2011, but uh, that's okay. If I ever go to a 2011 motherboard, I'll probably just go ahead and get a water block that'll work with that anyway. Because uh, I don't think there's enough metal there to drill out in order for it to fit over a 2011 socket since the, uh, the uh, mounting points are even wider across than they are on the LGA 1155. So eventually I'm going to have to deal with that probably, but who knows, maybe not. 5 gigahertz uh, i5 is definitely going to last me a very long time, that's for sure. So here's a look at the motherboard here. You can see that uh, thermal armor, as they call it, right there. I like that. I like that look. It has a very military grade quality to it. You can see that little fan right there. And thankfully, that little fan hasn't gone all noisy, as they like to do. Those little fans. Nothing really more than a 46 fan, frankly. see the Asus name rocking itself out there 
If there's any real weak point to my system here, it's the fact that I'm still rocking the Radeon 6770 video card. I really need to upgrade this, but for right now it still suits me just fine. So let's go ahead and uh, move to the front of this case. So here's the front door on this case. And opening the door reveals this massive radiator they got back here. And each one of these sections is a 120 millimeter fan that's mounted down in there. And only the center one lights up blue, which is, I, I like that look. You can see the tubes coming out of there and they go into the case there. Uh, the front of the case, uh, all of the covers here are vented and they all have individual filters in them which makes it extremely fun to try and clean out, let me tell you what. As you can see I have a front panel right here. This is actually kind of cool although I can't see it when the door's shut but this one hides away. At least it did last time I did this. Yeah, there we go. And then we have a card reader right underneath it. Wish it was motorized, but that's okay. Of course, I'm still rocking the same DVD burner that I put into this system many years ago. Still works absolutely perfectly. I can't complain. Speakers are a Logitech X530 5.1s. 24 inch monitor with a nice rotating background of some very lovely looking ladies. And I am rocking Windows 8 on this. However, I will be upgrading this to 8.1 since there's now an update for 8.11. So I want to get that update installed even though it's not officially released yet, at least as time of this uh, recording. But I do have all the files to update it to 8.11. And then behind my desk here, we have the actual subwoofer to the sound system. Now I'll give you a taste of what the sound system sounds like. At least as good as my camera can pick it up anyway. With playing a little bit of music video from the 1980s, one of my favorite ones by Genesis. Really like this video. Terrible dream. I am parched. That's better. I could use another one of those. That's one heck of a nurse. <laughs> oh, I love that part. Now we're on a quick benchmark on this to compare it to the LJ771. Okay, you can see we're doing pretty good here. 5,000 megahertz, 5 gigahertz, however you want to call that. Uh, the LJ771 was down here with the i7-965 right in here. So this is about mm, 10,000 points f higher than that. Oh wow, look at that, I'm at the top of the score. Wow, usually I'm not on the top of the benchmarks on my computers. I've never benchmarked this before, so wow. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and <clears throat> I found some of my Velcro strips there, so I went ahead and stuck that back on there. 
And then we have a side cover on. You can see how those tubes glow. Some of that lights because of the LEDs, obviously, but it actually glows a little bit brighter with that um, black light in place, in the correct place anyway. You can see how those uh, connectors are kind of lit up there too. That black light also. Also, the other thing too is those little white ties. You can see those little white ties are kind of glowing there. Because that black light right there. It's kind of funny how the black light looks blue in the camera. In person, it looks purple. Dark purple. Step back here a little bit. And my name for this computer is Black Beauty. Thanks everyone for liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing all of my videos. Peace out.